one line uh, because the road's supposed to be lined with IEDs. This morning starts the invasion of Obama. For six months, the 103rd Battalion has been in a stalemate with Boko Haram in Kundaga. Other advances have pushed the remaining Boko Haram fighters to a defensive position in the city of Bama, one of the last strongholds of Boko Haram. Despite three failed attempts, the 103rd is making a final advance on the city. The combat started 24 hours prior to the ground assault. With a kill zone of 100 meters, each shell was eliminating all life within the size of a football field. The thing to remember is that this isn't a practice range. The front is right there. The next objective, Bama, is right there. And they're lobbing these 155 high-explosive howitzer shells 13 miles downrange into enemy territory. After bombarding the enemy for hours on the eve of the ground invasion, the soldiers made a ceremonial toast, knowing that for some of them, it could be their last. You just kept us alive, Father, such a heart. We'll fight again. We'll fight again. It's not by our strength, but it's by your grace. You give us everything. And what we do when we're done? We do this. Are <laughs> buko. You know what it means? Come, let's fuck your eyes. You know what it means? No. That means you adhere to the prayers. Ah, I will take it. Very nice. And now you are free to cheers. Very well said. Cheers. cheers. To better life. To better life. Are 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 Eh, Ati. Buko. Ati! Okay, sir. Go on. <laughs> yes, sir. Let me leave this place for you. Justin! Justin! Jesus. Ati, man! Get out from here! They're my godfather. Ati, uh, get out! It's about midnight. Uh, on the front lines. Uh, soldiers are relaxed. They basically don't go to sleep because uh, they stay up all night and sleep during the day in case there's Boko Haram attacks. So. If uh, anything happens, jump right in this trench. That's it, that's life on the front lines. My aim, my aim is to keep Boko Haram. God damn it. <laughs> See, every time, our every job, time. Here, that our thing. job here is to keep Boko Haram. That fucking thing every time. We kill them. <laughs> We're waiting for Boko Haram. That's it. We're waiting for Boko Haram. Kill. That's the only thing I know is to kill. Kill Boko Haram. It's 5 a.m. before one of the advanced movements forward into Boko Haram territory, and the guys are doing a church service prior to the operation. The Nigerian army unit that I'm embedded with is gearing up for a final assault on one of the last Boko Haram strongholds. So once the unit is fully up and ready to go and all the troops are assembled, we're going to head down that IED-laden road for the final assault into Bama. patrol in a queue of about 300 to 400 soldiers moving towards Bama. These guys are on a foot patrol. They're staying in one line 
uh, with some tanks at the front and some support vehicles at the back uh, because the road's supposed to be lined with IEDs, uh, so it's safer than sort of flanking out in a tactical direction. Uh, and basically, they're advancing to a point where they're going to dig in and the other assault force is going to come from the left flank. Um, but right now we're doing about a four kilometer walk to the objective. You can see all of these villages to my left and right, which used to be fully occupied and now they're shot out and abandoned. It's a consequence of the Boko Haram insurgency and the campaign against them. A little further up the road, we passed a Nigerian armored vehicle. It had hit an IED a week before on one of the failed attempts to take Bama. All four soldiers inside were killed. So because the Nigerian army hasn't pushed this far forward, uh, this has mainly been either a no man's land or Boko Haram territory. Um, all these houses are abandoned. Sometimes Boko Haram fighters live in them. And one of the things you notice when you drive through is, other than the soldiers, it's, it's eerily quiet out here. In the middle of the road right there is the EOD, the Explosive Ordnance Disposal Officer from the 103rd Battalion. They found a divot in the middle of the road that they're now probing with sticks to see if it's an IED. Shitty part is that we just rolled right over that divot in our convoy. The tanks returned after doing forward reconnaissance. There had been a blue-on-blue -blue incident, otherwise known as friendly fire. Apparently, two soldiers had been killed when the fire force approaching from the left flank had mistaken another unit for Boko Haram. The invasion of Bama was stalled. The 103rd was ordered to spread out and hold their position. They dug in and prepared for a night in the bush. I caught wind that another assault was planned for the following morning. This time it would be led from the air. So I hustled back to the Madaguri airport, where I hoped to catch a ride with the air assault force on one of the MI-24 hind attack helicopters. Okay, it's five in the morning. Uh, today is the most significant day so far in the campaign against Boko Haram. This morning starts the invasion of Bama. So I'm gonna be in one of the attack helicopters, the MI-24. Um, that's gonna commence the attack, after which the ground forces are gonna move in and attempt to rout Boko Haram from the city of Bama. The private military contractors provided technical advice to the 72nd Mobile Strike Force. In addition, they provided a fully operational air wing. We were able to accompany the air wing for the first part of the assault on Bama. The Mi-24 hind attack helicopter is basically a flying tank. It was built by the Russians during the Cold War and can fire up to 4,000 rounds a minute. It's truly a devastating piece of military hardware and a game changer for the Nigerian army.
After two hours, the helicopter assault team returned to base. The ground forces would move in. I waited on the tarmac for reports from the ground forces. Within 24 hours, we learned that the assault was a success. Boko Haram was routed from one of its major bases, scattering the few remaining fighters into the Sambisa forest. The following day, Nigerian tanks rolled through Bama with President Goodluck Jonathan in the lead. This marked the first time a Nigerian president was able to enter Bama since the beginning of the insurgency. Much attention has been given to the reports that foreign military contractors were involved in the war against Boko Haram. While the fog of war always blurs the line between multiple sets of combatants and non-combatants, and there were many actors involved from neighboring Chadian forces to private contractors, it was my experience, embedded on the ground, that this was a Nigerian military victory. Despite the success of his army, President Goodluck's luck ran out. One week after the assault on Bama, he lost the election to his opponent, former General Muhammadu Buhari. But the battle is far from over. The new president has promised the people of Nigeria he will finish the fight against a weakened Boko Haram. This will not be easy. The next stage of combat is likely a complicated counterinsurgency battle, an unconventional fight against an unconventional enemy. But for the Nigerians who have been living in terror for years, and for the soldiers who have been fighting Boko Haram, there finally exists some glimmer of hope.